here with Paul Vandenberg, who's the Aboriginal Engagement and Employment Officer here at the club. Um, Paul, just run us through uh, what we've got planned as part of Indigenous Round this week. Um, part of this week is obviously we're trying to embrace Aboriginal culture, being AFL Indigenous Round, so we're really trying to have a real focus on um, not only the current Aboriginal players that we have on our list, but um, also the past. Um, we've had Gavin Wanganeen and Byron Pickett and Elijah Ware and Wade Thompson all been involved in various activities across the uh, uh, during this week across the club, um, which included uh, yesterday um, two sessions with the players and the staff of the Port Adelaide Football Club with a, a cultural awareness session, or I like to call it a culture education session, um, which I think was received really well. Um, it went for about an hour and a half both sessions and um, it gave gave players and staff of the club a little bit of an insight I guess into our culture and a bit about our history and um, how it is that we're still standing here today um, and, and sort of surviving but you know also about that process of working together and walking together side by side in, throughout this life and that's what we want to do which is and that's all about educating so that's where the cultural awareness has been really effective with organisations that undertake that sort of training. Um, and then Thursday and Friday we've got the uh, start of the Aboriginal Power Cup program which is a program that um, it's in its fifth year that the Port Adelaide Football Club manages um, which sees about 300 students um, nationally. Um, we've got some cultural activities um, during the carnival but also um, today we're getting the players to have a go at throwing some boomerangs around and might even get some food tasting in there to see how the boys go but um, it's been a real enjoyable week in terms of um, the club embracing Aboriginal culture, which has been really important. Yep, um, the, the feedback from the staff was um, was fantastic, and, and you talked about um, living in this this third space um, together. Can you just explain um, for the for the fans at home what that means? Yeah, I guess when I talk about the third space, it's um, it's a little bit about um, as Aboriginal people, you know, when when five o'clock arrives at the end of the day, we we sort of go back into this Aboriginal world that's kind of a little bit different. Our cultures and beliefs and values are different to non-Aboriginal people. Um, but then when we wake up in the morning, we're back into the Western world and that sort of space. And what we're trying to trying to do, and we'd love for the rest of, the, of Australia to follow, is is actually being in that third space, which so it's in between. It's if you're thinking about colours, you know, there's black and white, but we want everyone to be in the grey, you know, so if we're all in the grey, we think we're going to make this country and place a, a, a better place for everyone. Yeah, and uh, just explain um, to, our, to our supporters at home uh, the work that we do, the ongoing work that we do with the programs that we deliver to Indigenous students um, throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, the Aboriginal Power Cup is a perfect example of, of programs that we are delivering with some real good outcomes, you know, we're, we're teaching students about um, not just about staying in school but it's about healthy eating and making the right choices but it's also about their identity and culture and we found pretty early on that um, students um, that don't have access to elders and you know that the the cultural lifestyle that they don't get a real um, understanding of their identity so identity has played a big focus in the Aboriginal Power Cup this year and myself teaching a lot of these students about where they come from who their people are um, which is really important we feel before they start thinking about transitioning to further education or employment so we work with that we also have a program where we go to um, the Maralinga lands um, which is a remote part of South Australia cl pretty close to the South Australian WA border and that's all about engaging in the community getting them active and we're trying to do a lot more in that space because you know people and students and youth that come from those areas really do have a lack of access to services so by us going out there, we're actually giving them a real taste of an AFL footballer coming to their community, being in their homes, being on their oval. And, you know, the impact that that has in those communities is amazing. And, um, you know, we off the other programs that we sort of deliver, which has a, just a, a big effect, as much as effect as what we do in remote, is we bring schools and community people on site to the Port Adelaide Football Club and give them a real understanding of, you know, the facilities and what goes on in, in the AFL life um, and get the players to come talk about their training schedules, how, how dedicated they have to be to play AFL football. But that in itself is huge for, for Aboriginal people because they just don't get that sort of access to, to people and you know AFL people in particular. So we're trying to get ourselves out there as much as possible and we really believe in, in the stuff that we're delivering at the moment that's having real positive impact on our community and people. Beautiful. Thanks very much Paul and good luck for the rest of the week. No worries. Thanks mate.